Welcome to a new episode of my Linux driver tutorial. Today I want to show you how wait queues works in a Linux kernel module. But first, what is a wait queue? So wait queue is a mechanism from the Linux kernel to implement the wait function. And you can use the wait function for wait for a specific event or for a condition to be met, for example. So and the good thing about wait is, if you call wait, the thread in which wait is called will go into a sleep state and will no longer use or occupy any CPU resources, which is good. And if something occurred which could lead to the event to um, be true or which could lead to the condition to be met, you can use the wake up function and wake up a specific wait queue and then the condition is checked again and if the condition um, is true the wait function will return if not it will go back to sleep and wait for the next wake up to check the condition but i think it will be more clear if we make a small example and if i show you how to use wait queues so here i'm connected to my raspberry pi over ssh and let me cd into my linux driver tutorials folder and here you can see I've already created a new folder called 17 wait queue. And this will be our template or our base for this kernel module. So let's look what we got here. We have a make file and we have a wait queue.c source code for the Linux kernel module. So let's open it up. The goal I have for today is I will declare a global variable and I can write this variable over a device number and a device file from a user space application. And when the um, variable is um, gets the value 11, I want to be notified. And if the variable gets the value of 22, I want to be notified. So, and for these notifications, I will use um, the wait event functions and wait queues. Okay, so let's take a brief look what this kernel module does here. So up here I've declared two um, threads because I will use threads for calling the wait um, functions. Down here we have the thread functions which will be executed by the threads and we're passing a variable, an integer variable here. And over this selection we can say so one thread should monitor for the value 11, the second one for the global variable to be to become the value of 22. And here I have a selection. Later we'll add a switch case, and so I can um, I can choose which path I want to use. So because we want to use a device number, we need at least a write callback to um, update our variable. So here I have a write update which will read input from the user space to the kernel space and save it in this buffer here. And here are my file operations. Down here I am creating um, the, or here I'm registering the device number. And down here I'm starting my two threads. And that's that's all. Down here I am in the exit, with the module exit function, I just free the device number and that's about it. Okay, so now let's add the wait queues. For wait queues, we need um, one important header. So for wait queues, we need the header linux slash wait.h. And I will also include linux slash chiffies.h because I want to use one wait function with a timeout. Then the next step, which I have to do, I have to add um, declare my watch variable. So watch variable to monitor with the wait queues. And yeah, it will be a static long integer variable and I will call it watch bar and set it to zero initially. Okay, and now there are two ways to declare the wait queues. A static method and a dynamic method. Let's start with the static one. Static um, declaration of wait queue. So for the static 
we can use the macro declare wait q hat and in braces we have to type the name from our wait queue which is wq1 in this case and there is a dynamic way to do so so dynamic declaration and here i'm just declaring a variable from the type wait q hat t and i will call it wait q2 okay but the advantage of the static version is this wait queue is already initialized for the dynamic one we have to initialize the wait queue and i will do this in the module init function so here init dynamically created wait queue so init wait queue hat is the name of the function and we only has to pass a pointer to our wait queue which we want to initialize which is wait queue 2 here okay so much for the wait queues so now let's do the monitoring so I already said we will use a switch case here. So selection regarding to the integer I passed here. So let's go back to the init. Here for fret one, I passed t1, which is one here. And for fret two, I've passed it t2, which is two here. So um, in case the variable is one, we want to monitor the um, watch variable to become 11 and we can do so with the function wait um, event the first argument is the wait queue which should monitor the event and the second one is the expression and the expression is your watch variable equals to 11 and what this function does is it first it checks if the watch variable is equal 11 if not it will go to sleep and it will sleep as long as we call the wake up function and then it will check this condition again if the condition is false it will go back to sleep if the condition is true it will return from the function so if it returns i can print out here to the kernel slog print k wait q watch var is now 11 and i will break here so in case two, I will use the wait event timeout function because the problem with this function up here is it waits forever. For something timing critical, I only want to wait a specific amount of time. And the arguments are very similar. The first one is the wait queue, which will be used for this. The second one is the condition, which has to be met. And the third argument is the timeout variable here. So um or the timeout so i will convert milliseconds to chiffies with this function and i want to wait 500 uh, 5000 milliseconds which is one which is five seconds and now this function works the following way if um the way um this timeout elapsed and the condition is still not 22 it will it will um, return zero if the timeout elapsed and the watch variable is equal to 22 it will return a one and if the function is waked up with the wake up function and the condition is met it will return the remaining time from the timeout here so to wait for this i will have to write here while this is zero, watch for is not 22. And I will print out here, well, let me copy this a little bit easier. So wait queue, watch for is still not 22, but timeout elapsed. Okay, and in case we get out of this while loop, I will print out Watch variable is now 22. And I will break, and of course we need a default. And here we'll just do a break because we never get into this default branch here. Okay, great. But now the thing is missing is where we are um, updating the watch variable. 
and I will add this in the right callback. So here I'm um, saving the user space data in a char array because I will use echo for writing to the UIs file and we have to convert the value here from, a, um, from char array to a long integer. And thankfully there's a function available um, in the kernel to do so and this function is called k string too long. So convert string to long int if k string to long, the first argument is our string, the second argument is the base, and the next uh, last argument is the long integer, in, a pointer to long integer where we want to store the converse, converted value. And the space here I'm typing 10 because I want to pass decimal values. For hexadecimal values I could use 16, for octal values I could use 8 or if I want the program to auto detect I could use 0 but here in my case I want to pass decimal numbers so I will set it to 10 and in case this conversion didn't work um, the return value is minus error input value and in this case print k wait q error converting input Okay, but in case this worked, I will print out wake you um, watch war is now and let's print out the new value. Okay, cool. And there is one more thing to do because in case we're removing the um, the kernel module, we want these um, wait functions here to return. And the simplest way to do so is here in the exit module when we are setting the watch variable so that the condition is met. Then we are using the wake up function and I will wake up wait q1. Uh, by the way, I forgot this here because after the conversion we have to wake up both wait queues because on the condition is only evaluated if we are waking up the wait functions. So we have to use this wake up and point to our wake queue here. So, and let's add M delay, a small milliseconds delay to give the thread time to close or to shut down. And it will do the same for wake queue two. And this way we, we've made sure the threads are stopped and I will add this function here, so in case thread 2 could not be created and we are shutting down the kernel module, I want the first thread to exit too, so I'm adding these three lines of code here too. Okay, so now let me to compile the program and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay, okay, okay. Quite a lot. Switch selection. Okay, typo here. Yeah, maybe this typo will, yeah, switch. Okay, let's compile it again. Okay, still a lot of errors. Linux. Hmm, this really looks a little bit strange. Okay, this was the first compilation. My right. Invalid stories. Okay, this looks like I've forgotten a brace somewhere. Ah, ah, okay. Here I forgot to close the curly braces here, so this should be the problem. Let's try it again. Yeah, now it looks good. So let's insert the kernels module with Q. Okay, and let's check out the kernels lock. Okay, so we see both threads are running, both um, wait queues are now monitored, both threads are running, and if I type this again, we can see, okay, the timeout has elapsed twice yet. Okay, so the next step is to create the, um, the device file, so I will create a new device for, I will call dummy, it will be a character device with the major device number 64 minor device number 0. And I will 
allow everyone to write to this device file, make it a little bit easier for me. And now if I update the variable to 10 here, just dummy, it worked. And if I check the kernel clock once again, okay, we see the timeout elapsed quite often, the write back was called and watch variable is now 10. And if I set it to 11, we can see here thread monitoring, wait q1 finished execution, watch for is now 11. So the first wait returned and it was okay. And if we write 22, the second wait q will, will exit. So now watch variable is now 22, thread monitor monitoring wait q to finished execution. And if we wait five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, and check again. Yeah, we see we have left the while loop with the um, wait event timeout because it didn't print wait q, watch for is still not 22, but timeout elapsed here to the kernel's lock. Okay, now we can remove the kernel module. So that's it for today. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed the video. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. And yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope I will see you in my next video. Bye.